Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. While US inflation numbers are up this month, it seems team game rating inflation in Age of Empires 2 is coming to an end. There's just been an announcement of a fix to the calculation, which should theoretically stop the rating inflation that's been occurring over the last year and a half. A quick look at the distribution is kind of shocking, with just 7% of active team game players falling under the intended average of 1000 rating. Coincidentally, that's also the percentage of people who have above average driving skills, if you go by self-assessment. In this video, I want to dive into what I think they were attempting to do with the old calculation, what the problem was, and how it's been fixed. Before we jump into team game ELO though, I think it helps to understand how the 1 vs 1 ELO system works. The whole concept is that your rating is supposed to capture your expected win chance against another player. It's not that a 2000 rated player is twice as good as a 1000 rated one, but instead is all about probabilities. For example, a 100 point gap represents a 63% chance that the stronger player wins. That's true of a 700 vs 600, 1100 vs 1000, or 2400 vs a 2300. Only the absolute difference between ratings is what's important. Likewise, a 200 point gap means the stronger player has a 75% chance, and only the absolute difference between ratings is what's important. Essentially, what an ELO rating system does when it matches a 1200 and 1400 player is say 3 quarters of the time the 1400 player should win. If the 1400 player does win, they get 1 quarter of the maximum number of points that can be traded, called the K factor. For 1 vs 1 games, I believe the K factor is set at 32 points, so in this case the 1400 player would win a quarter of 32, or 8 points. Likewise, the 1200 player would lose that exact same amount. That's a relatively small number compared to 32, because this was supposed to happen if everyone's rating is correct. If, however, the unexpected were to occur and the 1200 rated player won, there was a 75% chance of that not happening, so they get 75% of the maximum points. In this case, that's 75% of our K factor 32, and 24 points are exchanged. It's important to note that the points exchanged are always balanced, that's not a coincidence. If instead their ratings are incorrect, and these are really both 1300 players in disguise, then we'd expect each would win half the time. As they play more and more games, the lower rated player is getting disproportionately more points each time they win, until the two have the same rating. It's a self-correcting system, and also one that's nice for not having a long memory. Even if you stay at a particular rating for years, if you were to improve, you would suddenly start moving up the ladder. At any time, if we take a snapshot and add all the points and divide it by the number of players, it has to be whatever the starting ELO is, which in the case of Age of Empires 2 is 1000 points. That's true even if new players entering are consistently below average in skill level. That's why despite a large increase over the last year in ranked players and overall skill level, the average is still 1000. So now that we've established how an ELO system works, how would that handle a team game, say a 2 vs 2 with mixed ratings? The change being introduced can be described in one sentence, as a switch from using the highest rated player on each team to team averages. But I want to try to explain first why I think they calculated it the way they did up until this point, and argue it's not as crazy as it seems, even if the implementation wasn't quite right. Let's say you have two teams. Team A has a 2000 and a 1000 rated player, and Team B has two 1500 ELO players. The question is, are these fair teams with an equal chance to win? Let's put aside the fact this is Age of Empires for a second, and view it as two parallel 1 vs 1 games. The only restriction is you have to win your side before you can move on to help the other. A 2000 rated player has about a 95% chance of beating a 1500 one on one. On the other side, because it's a 500 elo gap as well, and remember the gap in rating represents your odds of winning, the 1500 rated player has the same 95% chance to win their side. Assuming the ratings are accurate and play out as expected, the two remaining players can then square off. And again, according to ELO in a vacuum, the 2000 player has a 95% chance of winning this. Now my intuition tells me, and I expect yours does as well, that this is not a completely accurate way to model team game dynamics in Age of Empires. I'd argue what happened was two compounding mistakes. The first is arguably not a mistake, but is to view the 2v2 in the way just described, where the 1500 rated players are at a disadvantage. The critical mistake though is in trying to capture this they did the one thing you can't do in an ELO system, and they didn't balance the points at the end of the game. The official post actually gives some insight into how the calculation is done. In their example they seem to use a K factor of 100, so 100 points are awarded in a very unlikely outcome, and 1 point is credited in a very likely one. I'm not positive what the exact K factor is in team games, and 100 sounds very high, but it's their example and we'll roll with it, just keeping in mind in reality the numbers may not be this extreme. 
In their example, if Team A wins, the 2000 rated player gains 1 ELO, which is what happens if a 2000 rated player beats a 1500. This is a very likely result and is what we'd expect if these ratings are accurate, so only one point is given. The 1000 ELO player, on the other hand, gains 100 points, as if they beat the 1500 ELO player on their own. On the flip side, each player on Team B only loses 1 ELO, as remember we're assuming there's a very high chance that the 2000 rated player wins this if they fight them one after the other. The end result is Team A is given 101 points combined and Team B goes down by 2. That's bad, and means 99 points now exist that did not exist at the start of the game. In the grand scheme of the collective ELO ratings, we've bumped up the number of total points without changing the number of players. The average has to go up. Just wait though, it gets worse. If Team B's 1500 rated players win instead, then the 2000 rated player loses 100 ELO because it's assumed they lost to a 1500. Again, 1 vs 1, that would be very unexpected, so a lot of points are lost. The 1000 rated player, on the other hand, loses just 1 ELO, as they had very little chance of winning their side. After that, both 1500s are given 100 points at the end, as if they beat the 2000 rated player 1 on 1. The net result is we've again created 99 points out of thin air. It doesn't matter which side wins, either way we have 99 new points that didn't exist before. What was really happening is the devs were being too kind to the players. If Team A won, it was assumed simultaneously that the weaker player had contributed heroically and earned 100 points, while neither of the 1500s were punished as if they lost to a 1000. Likewise, if Team B won, it was assumed that each had heroically defeated the 2000 rated player one on one, instead of sharing the points. That generosity on the devs part meant that no matter who won, the average across the entire player base had to move up. Over a year and a half, the points being created this way has pushed the average up to around 1520. So what's the fix? Quite simply, they'll now be averaging between the teams at the start of the game. The example earlier is now just seen as a match between two 1500 rated players. If Team A wins, then both players on that team get 16 points, and both players on Team B lose 16. These are the numbers that they give, and it is a bit of an odd example, as the K factor has switched from 100 to 32. So we're dealing with smaller numbers, but the point is that each player on a team gets the same number of points and the transfer between them is balanced. So does this solve the problem? Well, I would argue it's a lot more fair for a high rated player, as the calculation now reflects the strength of your teammate, and not just the strongest player on your team. You're not punished for teaming with people lower rated, and a lower rated player also can't fly at the ladder as quickly by pairing with someone much stronger than them. The overall inflation should also stop, but unfortunately the damage is sort of already done. This doesn't immediately address the fact that the average is still 500 points too high. As new players join ranked with their 1000 starting elo, that would theoretically move the average down slowly, but in reality team game ratings will stay permanently inflated above 1 vs 1 ratings without an additional measure. There are ways that they could address that, like everyone quietly losing 10 points at the start of the week until the average is back down to where it should be. At that rate, we're looking at about a year for things to work themselves down. Alternately, they could just remove 500 points from everyone and restore the average, though I think they'd avoid shocking players like that for understandable reasons. Something else that makes intuitive sense but would actually not be very good is multiply everybody's ratings by two thirds. That would restore the 1000 average, but it would also change the absolute difference between players elo, which completely changes the implied odds. As we saw at the start, being 100 or 200 points higher ranked than another player has a very specific meaning. The devs so far haven't committed on whether or not they'll even address the higher average, and it's possible the 500 point difference may end up being somewhat of a feature. Newer players will be automatically placed at the bottom and have to work their way up, which is something you normally can't do without bringing down the average. In this case, that's kind of the goal. So that's the team game elo change and what I think was the mindset when setting up the old system. Some aspects made sense, but averaging across teams I think is the way to go and keeps things relatively simple and fair. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.